Welcome to our run-through of Onware soft, uh, On One Software's Perfect Portrait, part of their package of programs bundled under Perfect Photo Suite 7. Today, we're, as I say, we're going to be doing uh, Perfect Portrait. First things first, let's open an image and open a recent image. And there we go. This is the one we're going to be working on. Not a bad portrait to start with, but uh, a perfect portrait is really going to make a vast improvement on this. So, once it's open, again, um, I have the bundle. So all the uh, products come up here. So it defaults to layers. So simply click on portrait and we can get started. The program immediately begins in finding faces and then finding what? Finding features. Yeah, there we go. Uh, if there are, if there's more than one face, it will find all of them. You can see this icon being highlighted here. That's the kind of find faces trick. And yes, a face has been found. When you open the program for the first time, you're going to get a lot of these uh, little tool tips and little uh, uh, working tips that come up. Uh, once you get a little bit comfortable with the program, you can uncheck this box and they won't show up again. So a face has been found. The first thing we're going to do is click inside the box to get going. And another little set of tips come up as to what to do, which is uh, extremely useful. And the eyes and the mouth have been found and it's done a pretty good job with that. Now you see this kind of brush uh, uh, brush cursor that I've got here. That's because this icon uh, here is uh, clicked on. So I can immediately start doing things like defining in the image what is skin and what is not skin. Um, the first thing I want to do though is adjust these bounding boxes and we need to be really careful with these. Best thing to do, get over to your navigator, click on 100%. There we go. We want to make a really fine adjustment here. Uh, one of the mistakes I was making in the beginning here is that I was, I, w I was not being really uh, precise enough with these guys and it leads to trouble later on. So definitely get on your 100% view. You can see how the kind of arc of the curve changes as you slide your handle around. Just simply make sure that you're not capturing any skin whatsoever in here. If you do, when, you, when we come to the part where we're whitening the eyes, What's going to happen is you're going to whiten the skin also. You really don't want that. If anything, err on the conservative side and, and come in a little bit. Same thing on all of them. I'll go ahead and uh, pause the video on my end here in the uh, spirit of not making this an overlong video. And we'll check right back in after I have all these handles adjusted exactly where I want them to be, especially the mouth. We need to be careful around there. Okay, we've kind of got that pretty well. Let's come back to our fit. Now, once we have this all defined pretty well, eyes and mouth, we can come up here and click hide controls because that's a little distracting to look at. And now, let's come down here. What I want to do is place a mask on this image, and in this case I'm going to choose a red mask, and I want to see what the program is defining as skin as opposed to not skin. Okay, so I can see one area in here is being defined as not skin, but it really is. So, come up here with my brush, add to skin. I can change the size quite easily of the brush with this slider here, as you can see. Uh, if you click on any one of these W's, that's if you have one of these Wacom pressure sensitive tablets, click on that. Now you can feather the image, uh, sorry, feather the brush to make it uh, soft and fuzzy around the edges if you want. That's pretty good. Make sure, make sure perfect brush is selected. And I've got my add to skin, so swipe around here and define everything that really should be skin. Uh, the ears defined as not skin. I want it as skin, but I'm not too worried about ears when it comes to portraiture, frankly. Uh, I do want to define as skin the neck because there are some wrinkles on the neck and I would like the program to work on that as well. So I'll go ahead and take all of that 
could take the shoulders too, but I'm not really all that concerned about that. Maybe, yeah, why not right up in here? Now, having worked on this image before and practiced with it, what I found is that this is kind of an interesting area up here. Number one, the skin is fine. It's all smooth and, 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 and no wrinkles, etc. But I do have a lot of hair up here. So when I do start making these retouching adjustments to the skin, it obviously brings it in here because this is defined as skin. And what happens is that the bangs start getting blurry or fuzzy or there are these kind of, you know, beauty adjustments, the retouching adjustments here that are happening to the bangs that I don't want to happen. So I'm going to come up, define this area as not skin, and it really will not impact, including the hair here, and it really will not impact the overall effect of my image whatsoever, because as I say, the forehead, the, the, there's nothing really I want to adjust on the forehead anyway, mostly the rest of the face. Okay, good. Come in. Come in. Go ahead and get that. Okay, we're pretty good. I might want to touch up these lips a little bit. I don't want to define them um, as skin. I want them as not skin. I need to bring my brush size down significantly to make sure I get the lips okay. Uh, I don't need to define the lips as skin because I've got a whole set of sliders where I'm going to work on uh, making adjustments to the mouth. take that in. I'm not going to kill a whole bunch of time doing this in the spirit of not making this an overlong video. But okay, let's go ahead and go with that. All right. Now I want to turn the mask off. Get to my after image. Okie doke. Now we can kind of begin. First thing I want to do is, if this panel is not expanded on your interface, click on the triangle in this case, I'll click on female, and now I'll have my presets. I've got 12 of them here, and one I've experimented with before, which I'm kind of liking, really, is this one called, what is it, whole something or other? Full body, yeah, that's it. Oh, full body, and let's see what kind of effect we have coming in. I really like it. Uh, I'm I love presets. Presets are really a good indication as to how much research a particular company has undergone uh, in uh, making, you know, making the presets so that you get close to where you want to go, if not 100% to where you want to go. That's good. Okay. Um, what should we do now? Let's take a look at some of these. If you have more than one face in your image, what you can do is click this icon to find other faces, to select other faces, and then you can edit each indi individual face separately, which is fantastic uh, 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 flexibility of this program. This is kind of the editing here. I'm going to click on this, Retouch Brush. This works exactly as it does in the Photoshop spot healing brush. There's the cursor. You just hover over some area you want to remove and click on it. To get a good idea of what's going on, click on the loop view. Loop view is nice because wherever your cursor goes, that's just what you see in the loop view as a hundred percent enlargement. Click on that and it will simply disappear down here on the neck. I'll click on that. That's a freckle. It's not a blemish. It's not an imperfection. I don't really care about freckles ordinarily. I'm going to go ahead and leave this, but just for demonstration purposes, click on that, and it goes away. One little tip I could give you on using the retouch brush is that if you get to an area where, where, where you want to retouch it, you want to get rid of a spot, but it's very close to, as you can see in the loop view, close to a high contrast area or an edge area, you will have a problem. Um, because I'll click right here. You can see what happens. The diameter of your brush, it, 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 the program samples pixels around that to blend in. So I'll click there. And as we will see, 
it's going to bring in, see what it did? It brought in and blended in this darker area here. That's kind of a mess. I'll hit Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to jump back one step. And there we go. The other thing you can do with this tool is click and drag. Now I've got some imperfections here I would like to remove, so simply click and drag. And again, just like this spot healing brush, beautiful, removed it beautifully. This discoloration area here, click and drag, and it is gone. Very, very nice. I might work on this area here, but that's the retouch brush. Okay, so we've got our preset set. Let's go ahead and do some uh, fine tuning, and let's take a look at some basic uh, controls here. We've got the navigator. You click inside the box, so if you've got for example, 100% view, you click inside, drag it around. I'm going to go ahead and fit it. The loop view we've just gone over, this is extremely useful. You should always be viewing your image as 100%, whether it's in the preview image or the loop view. The histogram is pretty good, too, because you can click that triangle, and, and it will show you all the areas that are being clipped in this example. The very darkest areas have lost all detail and they're just flat black and that's what this triangle when you click on it shows you. Let's collapse this for a moment, but we will get back to the loop view. Skin retouching. Okay, I played around with this face size thing and it doesn't really seem to do much for me. I kind of leave that alone. I've already um, uh, defined what is skin and not skin in the mask, so I don't really feel I need this. Blemishes. Uh, be careful with this one. I played around with this one. If you've got, like, you know, light, medium, heavy acne or something like that, uh, pimples, uh, this is a good one. This is not the case in this face. So you don't want to bring this up. But if, if I did, just for the heck of it, um, it doesn't do nice things to the face. It gets a little blurry around here. And I uh, don't like the effect much. Use it if you have to, obviously. But I'll bring that down. Uh, smoothing is pretty much straightforward. Uh, bring that all the way up and more and more and more you smooth the skin. Do be careful with this. I know uh, it's very tempting to ramp this guy way up, but then what, what ends up happening is that you create kind of an unrealistic image. So I'll go ahead and bring that up just a little bit. Subtle changes, right? Shine. Now I see I'm, there's a little shine here on the cheeks, the cheekbones. I'll bring this up a little, but again, to ramp it up for demonstration purposes, it's bringing in kind of a rougey effect a little bit. Kind of a skin tone rougey effect, which I don't like, but I do want to get rid of that shine. So I'll bring it down and then bring it up. Try to, try to zoom in on that area where the rouge effect is not annoying or even noticeable actually, but I'm still getting rid of the shine. Uh, shadows, this is a very subtle one, uh, number one, but, but in, uh, having said that, there aren't a lot of shadows here. I'll bring that all the way up from zero to a hundred and really not much of a change. Bring that all the way down to zero and again, not that much of a change. Texture is for the skin pores. Sometimes when you do smoothing and, and you've got stuff, you, you want to do some serious smoothing, but what's happened is the skin is kind of, the skin pores have kind of lost their texture. That's what you use this for, bring the texture up. I'm not going to do that on this because I don't feel I need it, but it's kind of a grain effect as you can see. So go ahead, bring that down, up, down and down and down on this image might want to have this clicked on. I want to work on the face only. So we're not affecting the background. That's a very useful kind of thing. Now evenness is about the range of colors uh, across the face, the, uh, the range of the skin tones across the face. I like the range of the skin tones across this face. But if it's not looking even enough, then go ahead and start pulling this up. Again, let's ramp it up to see what happens. It gets a little bit too flat and it starts looking a little bit gray. So I'm going to pull that down and maybe down a little bit more. And then I want to pull the shine down a little bit more because I'm starting to see that rougey thing again. This looks great. It is really, really looking pretty good. Okay. 
now. Okay, let's uh, collapse this and move on to color correction. It's off by default. Click on that. How strongly do you want the color correction to come in? And the warmth is pretty uh, pretty much going to uh, warm up the imp. Pull it to the right, it'll warm it up. And I do want to warm it up a little. But again, as with so many of these programs, really subtle changes. Or just be real subtle with stuff. I just want to bring it in just a little bit. Uh, color shift is going to shift you from uh, where is your magentas and greens. That's right. So you pull it all the way down. You're hitting towards the magenta side, which is a warm color. So that'll warm up your image even more or cool it down with the greens. But let's face it, skin should never be green, at least not on this planet. Looking good. I like it. I like it. I like it. You also have this option, uh, which is ethnicity. So let's check our sliders out here. We've got 46 and 27. If I choose Asian or Middle Eastern, no, that's kind of close. But then the warmth came way down. But I like the warmth, so I want to bring that up. Boy, living in the climate there, with all that sun, you're going to get a tan. Let's bring that up a little bit. I like that. Okay, color correction. Mouth and eyes. Now, this is outstanding. Eye sliders up here. Uh, sharpening kind of detail and whitening of the eyes. We definitely want to whiten the eyes. That's always a good idea. Let's get back into our loop view to make sure that the eyes are coming out OK and not. That looks great. That looks really good. That looks really good, too. Now, detail, do I want to do that? I'm going to bring up the detail, or what you might consider the sharpening right there. That looks good. You want to make sure it doesn't start looking artificial. And that doesn't. That looks super nice. Whitening of the mouth. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring her all the way up. And I don't know. What do you think? Does that look unnaturally white? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, they're white, but maybe I would pull that back just a just a little bit, just a little bit. And I think that might look better. Perfect white teeth. A vibrance is nice. This is a very, very, very subtle effect uh, that works on the lips. Drag that up all the way, and it's going to start making those lips pop a little bit more, making them look real healthy and red and stuff. Outstanding. Well, I love this program. It's really, really good. It's, it's pretty much got it all for you. What else could we do for you? Preview windows are nice. Uh, click on the little A letter down here. That's for after. Click on it once, and you get your before and after two separate images side by side. Look at the difference. It's really tremendous and much better with uh, Perfect Portrait. Click on that again, and you get a, a, a single image split uh, vertically before and after. Click on it again. You get two separate images horizontal. Click on it again, one image horizontal. And again, to get back to the original. Boy, does that look good. Wow. Any other details? I'm not sure. Um, at the very end, what you can do is come down and just uh, apply all the changes. And then from there, what you can do, if you want to uh, make it a black and white, just simply click on B&W, the uh, perfect black and white. And uh, your portrait uh, changes, adjustments will all be saved. And then you can turn it into a black and white, or put selective focus on it, or make it a much enlarge it, make it a much larger image, or put all kinds of different effects on it, as we'll show in different videos. I think that's about it. Excellent por uh, program. I highly recommend it. Um, check out our website, PhotoshopPro.com, Photoshop-Pro.com. We have a 15% discount on all on-one products. Uh, well worth the money. You, you got pretty much everything you need there. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.